euthanized by a great Caesar. Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to the Central African nation of Rwanda, where voting is underway in the second presidential election since the genocide of 1994. The incumbent president, Paul Kagame, is widely expected to win, but the election comes amidst a wave of attacks on political opponents. Human rights groups have accused the Kagame government of cracking down on any dissent before the vote, while the government-appointed media council has clamped down on independent newspapers publishing critical views. At a recent news conference, President Kagame dismissed the accusations and promised free and fair elections. Forget about this cheap talk about uh, all sorts of things, uh, you know, hell coming down on Rwanda. And, and no, forget about it. It's not true and it's not going to happen and it's not happening. I can say that with uh, confidence and elections are going to happen freely and fair. Well, opposition leader Victoire Ingabire had hoped to contest the election as presidential candidate for her party, the United Democratic Forces. But in April, a court sentenced her to indefinite house arrest, effectively taking her out of the election. She accuses President Kagame of using the country's anti-genocide laws to silence his opposition. Victoire Ingabire told the Women's International News Gathering Service last month what the international community should be doing about the crackdown in Rwanda. You know, I have called the international community, especially the countries backing the current regime, to realize that they are not doing a service to the people of Rwanda by supporting an uncompromising regime. It is in nobody's interest to keep on the current standoff. Everybody knows the, that Kagame will be elected. He will be the next president for the next seven years. Everybody knows it. Why you can and the U.S. will send the observer if they know that there will be not really in the free election in Rwanda. Why they send money? What they do, they not help Rwanda's people. This is why I ask them, don't come because there is no election in Rwanda. And I don't see why people will spend time, money, and coming here for masquerade election. Rwandan opposition leader Victoria Ngabiri speaking to independent journalist Ann Garrison, who's been closely following Rwandan politics. For more on today's election and the lead up to the polls, I'm joined now by Ann Garrison from San Francisco. And welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about this election day and what we know so far. Any press who report this is a real election day, it's a real election. Any government leaders who, who recognize it as such are being irresponsible. And Didis Kasana, the exiled editor of Umuseso, who fled to Uganda earlier this year, said to me some months ago, this time we won't need an apology. All the community that have been moaning for the past 16 years about their guilt about how they turned their back on Rwanda are doing the same thing now. Talk about um, Kagame, of course, is widely expected to be the next president to uh, be reelected today. But talk about the charges of repression. Who was allowed to run? Who wasn't? What has happened to people in this run up to the election, Anne? OK, just a second. First, you use the phrase widely expected. And I have to laugh. And I'm not at you. I really appreciate your coverage of this. But anybody who's hearing the typical sort of phrases that are used to cover an election, widely expected, may ride such and such an issue to be, is just laughing. <laughs> because this, this is not an election. Uh, there are several handpicked candidates, handpicked by the government. And the whole thing has been staged. No one who's been following widely expects it. Every, everyone knows what's going to happen. With regard to the repression, there were three viable candidates. Victoria Ingebirigo Mahosa is under house arrest. She has been for months. She is unable to leave the city of Chigali to speak to the rural population, who are the majority of the country. She is unable to leave the country. Several days ago, I was getting news that she did not have a place to live because she said those who had rented houses to her 
had received death threats. She had moved twice, and she was being forced to move again, another, and another landlord had backed out on signing a lease. Now, I've got to trust that she's found a place to live. I haven't spoken to her since then. Bernard Naganda, the candidate of the party's Parti Social in Berkuri, has been in prison since June 24th. Frank Habaneza, and he's reporting that he's been tortured. Frank Habaneza, who would have been the presidential candidate of the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda, is at the Global Young Greens Conference in Berlin right now. His vice president was beheaded. On July 14th, the body was found in the wetlands of a river in southern Rwanda. The story that the police came up with after that was that it might have been a robbery, but his keys were left in the car, his car was left behind, the keys to his house were left behind. It's, it's rather amazing that the government doesn't even, and, and the Rwandan police don't even bother to make up very plausible stories about these things. And everyone who has been arrested, assassinated, or the object of an attempted assassination has been an enemy of the government. Anne Garrison.